Little did I know, clicking on this email would cost me $500. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. I've got kind of an interesting unboxing segment for you guys today. A couple of small things, one thing that cost me a whole bunch of money that's not guitar related necessarily, and two instruments that we can check out. But let's start with this. I've received an email late November, early December that I should check this product out because I kept saying that I wanted to up my photography game for the guitars, you know, make my website a little bit better, stuff like that. So somebody said I should try this thing out. And what that is, is the blackest material in existence. Muso Black. <laughs> muso, Muso, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Like, it might be familiar with the term Vanta Black. That's another extra, extra black. But, like, check out this Les Paul Custom. Yes, it's black, but it's not light-absorbing black hole black. So I was always curious if I could paint a room that color and use that for guitar photography, but I never knew they made it in cloth formats too, so I picked up a whole roll. You can only find this in Japan as far as I'm aware of. I got it from a place called Copro because that's where the link was. I'm not sure if other people do it, but their thing here says, don't become a ninja. <laughs> so yeah, it's ridiculously expensive to get this cloth, but if it works, it's well worth the money. Oh man. I don't know, I just kind of expected something different in person. Like, it's a very dark color, but on the camera, it really does take away so much. So, it's a shame. I just put these granite countertops in here because I thought it'd be better than the green one that we had here, but I'm almost tempted just to lay this over top because that's a nice, clean look. I can get some nice shots of a guitar. I bought so much of it because I thought I could do, like, a backdrop for it. However, I'm not quite sure if it's wide enough. Like, it'll be good enough for a single guitar, like a photo. So we'll, we'll have to play around with this. I might put it on my workbench. It's a nice, almost velvety-like material. I mean, yeah, that does look professional. Wow. <laughs> you can check out the Action Lab here on YouTube. He actually made a coat out of this, and, like, he can just literally disappear if this is the background. So I'll find an interesting way to use this, but I'm really curious how this will look with the guitar. So let's go ahead and unbox this one and see how it looks against that. Inside here, we have a repeat guitar, one that we had reviewed a couple of weeks ago. I picked up a second one because of reasons I explained on that Jerry Cantrell. Sometimes it's nice to have a backup of one of these in the review and demo business. Because anymore, you never know when something's going to ship. So inside here, we have Adam Jones version two, once again with that black background. That's looking pretty nice. I think I need to stitch like two of these together. I think that's maybe why they do this. Maybe you can sew them together. But let's go ahead and get this example open because every single one of these aged ones is going to be just a tad bit different here. Oh, wow. What is it always with the second one I get? It always looks better. I think it's because aging jobs always kind of turn me off at first, but then you kind of start to warm up to them a little bit. But this one, I would say the, the color looks a little bit darker than my first one, and it's got a little bit more of a dark border to it on the edge. The finish checking is nice and tight on this example. So I had sold my first one pretty quickly. I, I gave it a very fair price. This one I'll probably hold out for a little bit more because that's nice. I don't even know if I really want to sell it, but with keeping all these guitars, I'm kind of running out of money, guys. <laughs> I need to sell some stuff. I know I'm trying to, you know, hold back the really special examples for the museum that'll be in the future, but at the same time, I have to be able to, you know, commission that museum. It's either that or I buy a used building and just like convert an old bank to the museum or something like that. I mean, ultimately what I want to do is have like a mini golf course. That way the kids and wife can come along too. If they're not interested in guitars, they can do mini golf. And of course we'll have like Les Paul shaped courses and Stratocaster shaped courses, assuming Fender and Gibson will let us do that. <laughs> See, the other beautiful thing about this material is it's supposed to be non-reflective. So you see how it's over top of it right here? It cuts away that glare. So what I'm guessing I can do is maybe build like a little box out of this material and that can kind of help get rid of some of the reflections like in B-roll shots too. But I'd say something just like this looks pretty darn good once you get everything else out of the sides. So, so far, I think that is going to look pretty promising here and maybe help my camera focus a little bit better on some of these subtle details. 
But all right, let's get back into Guitar Town. This one was part of my international forwarding service and new guitar day program kind of all intertwined. About a year or two ago, I did a custom order through Fender for somebody else that I shipped them overseas. And this is another repeat of that from the mod shop, which is kind of confusing now that we have the Gibson mod collection. <laughs> but that's Fender USA's version of, hey, you can custom order your own spec'd out guitar. So this one needs to be shipped uh, somewhere over in Europe, but it's actually going to be a gift from his girlfriend in order to get this guitar. Because there was some talks of, uh, it's kind of expensive for a Fender USA once you add in all the shipping import duties and taxes and everything like that. But since it's a special occasion, she greenlit the whole project here. So let's see what Mod Shop Stratocaster we've got going on. Ooh. That's pretty nice. So is it Shoreline Gold? Is that what it's called? Aztec Gold. Okay, Mystic Aztec Gold on top of that. Let's take a look at this puppy. That is very smart. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a gold Stratocaster be this beautiful. I mean, that is nice. Like there's gold top on Les Pauls, but this has like almost a little bit more silver within it. And the fact that he went with the gold hardware on top of that, it's just not something that you see every day on a Stratocaster. No wonder this thing is so blingy. So other than that, we have a rosewood fretboard on here, gold tuners, standard stuff here with your truss rod adjustment up there. Pure white pick guard. Flipping over to the back, we get our gold mod shop neck plate that's looking pretty cool. And what's kind of interesting here is the serial number is 2021. But if you know anything about the mod shop, if you try to order one of these in December, they don't actually start building it until after they get back after New Year's. So even though we placed this order like December 1st, it took them three months to do instead of the normal one month. But that's strange that they didn't say they started to build this until that time. So the saying goes, as long as they have it in stock, you can have whatever you want, right? That's kind of what the mod shop is. So this must be a slightly older 2021 neck that they had in their shelves. And then maybe they just do the custom bodies of whatever people order them but I'm definitely a fan of this finish. That is nice. And it's been a while since I've had a Fender, but it feels like the interior of the Fender cases have changed. Okay, made in Vietnam now. So these used to be made in China. This part feels about the same. They still have the bumpers and all that, but this in here, it's no longer, I guess you could say styrofoamy feeling. Like it's a styrofoam insert in here and then they just had like a, a cloth material. But this, I like it. It's a little bit softer. So Fender, I like these new cases much better than the other ones. They feel like they would uh, protect the finish a little bit more too. But looking at our spec sheet, looks like he specced out the alder body on this with a modern C-shaped neck profile. Corona Classic pickups. Now in case you missed it, we had golden locking tuners here and the two-point synchronized tremolo system. So if you're located out of the US and you want a Fender Mod Shop custom order, I can't help you with that. It gets expensive, I'm not gonna lie. It does get expensive when you add all the fees in, but sometimes it's worth it if you can't find the guitar that you want outside of a custom order. So I'll have to get this one packed up and shipped off, but I got a couple other small boxes that I can unbox with you guys today. And starting off here, I have a parts lot that I purchased from one of my buddies that I buy a lot of Black Les Paul customs from, Donnie. So he had these parts a good four months ago for sale. So I purchased them because it's always good to have some parts for stuff. So this right here is actually a 70s, 80s era Gibson pick guard. And let me tell you guys, if you've ever had to replace one of these, you know how hard it is to find these things for sale separately because nobody really ever replaces them. There's no reason to replace a pick guard for the most part, unless something breaks and then it's no longer usable. But this one's nice and lightly aged. That is a nice find. This is something, I mean, I would probably sell it for 400 and most people wouldn't pay 400 unless they really need it. But it's because I know with, if I ever need one for a really rare guitar, it's gonna cost me that much to buy it. So that's why I generally just don't even list my parts. You're welcome to check with me if I have stuff, but I am not the cheapest guy to buy from when it comes to really rare and not really replaceable stuff anyways. So inside here, we've got some more fun stuff. Four beautiful speed knobs here. That'll go great on any custom. This looks like more so miscellaneous parts instead of vintage, but I'll have to double check what his parts list said because that truss rod cover looks pretty new to me. 
as do the switch tips, but it's always good to have a few spare of those. But hey, check these bad boys out. These are hard to find. It's the diamond posi lock strap locks. Remember how I tell you guys the Adam Jones ones didn't quite get it right because they don't have the gripping teeth? That's how you can tell these are vintage original. So that's one set, two set, two and a half sets. So if you need a set of these bad boys, you can let me know. Or if you need a spare, I don't know, I might have a different spare one that this could make a set all of a sudden. But these are not cheap either. They're about $250 a set when I sell them. Which might seem crazy to pay for strap buttons, but it's a shortly lived Gibson part. Now, lastly, let's check out what's in here. We get a bridge off of a Les Paul Custom. Now, if I remember correctly, it's not too bad. I know one of these is collapsed, but this one's not too bad. Most vintage ones will have some sort of a, a collapsedness to it. You, you can bend some of them back. Other ones, it's just for restoring stock. And hey, what do you know? I do have a TP6 tailpiece in Chrome. I just bought it. So I don't need to buy one. I can put this on my Artisan right away. Although I might swap it out for slightly nicer condition fine tuners. Oh, never mind. I've got one right here in almost perfect shape. Yeah, should have opened this box a couple of weeks ago. Man, that's so clean. I almost think it's a reissue, but it's not. The fonts are right. Very cool. Awesome little parts haul right here of vintage stuff. I don't necessarily buy these vintage parts as much anymore. But it's always good to have them in case you need them. Next up, let's see what we have in this X Shutterfly box. Feels like we might have something good. A lot of these boxes have been sitting for a while because they were small. They arrived when I was moving and they just kind of got thrown to the wayside. But it feels like we might have some sort of tuners or something in here. Oh, okay, nice. I remember now, I found these on eBay. I think this was actually in a guitar hunting episode and I either cut that part out because I didn't want somebody else to buy it or I left it in and I just ended up winning the auction. So these are ridiculously rare pearl tipped Gibson branded Schaller tuners. These were used on the 335S standard and I think one other of those models. And you can also find something very similar to this on a Spotlight Special Antique Natural. So I always like to have a set of these just in case I get an Antique Natural that's missing it. I mean, most people won't be able to tell the difference between the two. And I have seen some Spotlight Antique Naturals be see-through, but a lot of them aren't as much. So I think I picked these up for like 70 bucks in that auction. That was a steal. I mean, this set is worth about 400 bucks to the very right guy. Now, general ones, they're worth about 225 a set or so, but I am very happy with that purchase. One day I might need those. So into the parts drawer that goes. <laughs> it might seem crazy to have a parts drawer, but again, you never know when you're gonna need this stuff. And I think it'd be fun in like my museum just to have a little parts accessory, like, you know, have a write up about the TP6 tailpiece, the top adjust bridge versus the regular bridge. I also want a board that has every single limited edition truss rod to screw to it, like be a headhunter. Like, I think I have a Les Paul Artist one. I know I've got an LP Firebrand. I used to have a 2550 anniversary. So sometimes those things come up for sale. I don't take them off the guitars, but sometimes other people do. Now inside here, I think is a very generous gift from a viewer of the show who saw I needed this and they had it on Craigslist or their local buy trade sell and nobody was biting. So this right here is a supposed to be a very nice little Dremel kit that I can use for various things. Now you might be saying, hey, Trogley, don't you already have one of these things? I did, but I burnt it out doing all my makeshift routing using the wrong stuff. So it's great to have a functional one again, because I think I would like to use this on a really low setting for polishing the frets now that I figured out the other stuff. And of course, getting out strip screws. Hopefully there's a little bit in here that might help me like that. So thank you very much for this generous gift. I hope to make some good use out of it and <laughs> maybe cause some more mischief. Like I, I get in trouble with things like this, right? <laughs> All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.